On an international level, the movie industry is dominated by the big players, with the USA and India using their huge domestic markets as a springboard for worldwide dominance. Even first world economies find it difficult to challenge the US and Indian filmmaking industries independently, which is why we're seeing a fair number of international co-productions on the circuit and pay-to-view channels. This makes it all the more difficult for a local industry to find its niche. But there are some promising signs coming from movie makers here in South Africa. The success of Material back in 2012 showed what could be done with an authentically South African story. And recently, we've seen a crop of local movies that explore the lives and experiences of people of Indian origin. There have been some exciting developments on the local movie scene, so let's get an overview. First release in the year that saw the dawn of democracy in South Africa. The feature film version of Sarafina told the story of the 1976 student uprising in Soweto. Idris Elba took the role of the iconic statesman in the biographical movie Mandela, Long Walk to Freedom, which was released in the year of his passing. In Kheba, the wound was praised internationally for its sensitivity while causing controversy at home. Five Fingers for Marseille presents a classic western in a South African setting. Contain this and you're going to leave a trail of bodies. 31 million reasons showed why crime doesn't pay, especially if you're a cop. Based on a novel by Athol Fugard, Sotsi won an Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film. Recent releases from India were showing at the multiplex, but Karusha was here for a homegrown cinema success story. Hi, I'm Karusha, and it is such a pleasure to be mapping out the success of the local film industry with particular emphasis on stories around the South African Indian family. Three Days to Go opened earlier this year and was a massive hit to the audience and is one such story. Action. Baby, every time I look in your eyes, my world goes crazy. We all know that no matter how long it's been since we've seen our Indian relatives, when we do meet up at family gatherings, a wedding, or especially a funeral, there's bound to be some sort of drama, whether it be a catfight or two brothers willing to feud over family inheritance. I'm catching up with award-winning producer Bianca Isaac today, who made her directorial debut in Three Days to Go. Hi Bianca, congratulations on the success of Three Days to Go. How does it feel? It feels like a step in the right direction. And this is your debut as a director? Yes. Tell me about that experience. I actually had a fun time. I'm used to being behind the scenes, but as the producer, so I'm used to saying no. You can't have that. Whereas this time I was in front of the camera going, oh, please, can I have that? And I really, really need it. Do you think that the cast and the talent that were used in this movie are able to fare internationally? Oh, absolutely. We definitely have the goods to travel. We just need to find a way to get there. The themes in Three Days to Go are quite relatable across the board. Do you think then that the film has the ability to translate internationally? I suppose like all films, if it's got global appeal, people want to see it. If it's got very niche appeal, people want to see it. And I think there's a hunger for content from South Africa. So here's to all the films traveling. Madhushan in Durban met up with co-producer and casting director of Three Days to Go, Kajal Bhagwandin, who also played a leading role in the film. Kajal, it's been a busy time for the South African movie industry. Indeed it has. What is it about movies with an Indian flavor that resonate with the audience? With any film, I think it's about relatability. If you see yourself as a character or you see something familiar in the film, you get a little warm feeling inside and I think that's what makes people love it so much. If you look at the stories we are telling, we are telling human stories. And no matter where you are in the world, if you relate to the story in some way, you are going to enjoy it. Stunningly beautiful and enormously talented, Kajal is choosing to spend more time behind the scenes. She wishes to create projects that people can enjoy and relate to both locally and internationally. The future of South African films with Indian content is bright. With a breakout film like Keeping Up with the Kandasamis, I think that showed everyone in South Africa and Africa that there is an audience for that. Also in Durban, Madhushan caught up with Raul Brijnath, who acted in the series The 
the Indian Detective on Netflix and more recently in Three Days to Go. Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. Babes, thank God it's you. I ain't you, babes. Where's my money? I mean, I don't have it with me right now. Let's try this again. Where's my money? Rahul, welcome to Mela. You've recently been in Three Days to Go. What was that experience like? It was amazing. I think everybody had played such a beautiful part in making me, as a human being, firstly, comfortable. And secondly, we, we gel beautifully as, as, a, as a family in, on set. Raul believes that Three Days to Go has global relevance because of its foundational family values theme. We, as of recent, have been creating the need to tell stories that are going to impact the lives of others. And by virtue of the fact that it is relating to you and your close family, you can actually say this happened to me. And that inspires one to see that the end result could be much more different than you envisage. And I think that's the reason that the stories need to be told. I found a girl. Again? What do you mean? Broken Promises Forever raked in one million rand at the box office over three days at just 15 sites. This is the fourth installment of the popular Broken Promises franchise. I failed your father. I never find him one nice girl. So he ended up with your mother. With me is award-winning director, producer, and scriptwriter, Kumaran Naidu. Kumaran, welcome back to Mela, and congratulations on the success of Broken Promises Forever. Thank you. Financially, according to the box office, Broken Promises Forever has done extremely well. Absolutely. You know, I think when we went in, we were kind of the underdogs, but uh, thankfully to the fans and their loyalty and commitment, we did exceptionally well. What would you attribute the popularity of South African Indian movies to? In terms of the low local audiences, especially the Indian audiences, they want to see their stories, right, coming out because most of them have actually experienced it and they want to see what do other people do differently. So that dysfunctional family is actually quite prominent throughout. I don't think you actually have a proper functional family in this country. Everybody has problems and what makes people interested in their storyline is that, you know, you have a problem, what's the result? Good Looking for Dean Mia is an actor, model, TV presenter, and now has entered the world of movies as the producer of Broken Promises Forever. For Dean, lovely to have you on Mela as always. You've been busy? Yes, it has been a busy year, but uh, always thanks to Mela and thanks for having me back. What are some of the unique challenges faced by South African Indian actors? Kurusha, the biggest thing right now for any South African artist, not just film, but music in any way, is obviously making it a stable income. So as an Indian person, you know, uh, there's never always enough roles. Hence, we are here. We want to create this for Indian people to show that we are very talented, we have stories to tell, and we also want to ensure that our artists are working all the time. Now, good looks aside, what have you learned from movies? First of all, good looks does not count. <laughs> okay, so that's what. Something I've realized is it's gotta be great stuff. Quality is so important. Everybody wants to make money, but you also have to give the people what they want and you have to have your quality. Dreams have a funny way of becoming real, and that's when you grab them and never let them go. Even if they seem impossible, especially when they seem impossible. The film industry in KZN has seen steady growth over the last two years with movies like Deep End, Three Days to Go and The Kandasamis. Madhushan met up with Simpiwe from the KZN's Film Commission to see how the commission is helping to stimulate this growth. South African movies based on Indian families have in particular been successful. To what would you attribute the success? I mean, the success of movies based on Indian content has really been great because it really talks to, I mean, the audiences. We've actually seen the success of Afrikaans movies, and now I think this is a turn now for the, for the Indian movies. What criteria does the KZN Film Commission take into account when deciding on which project to fund? The Film Commission really wants to make sure that uh, whatever investment we make in movies comes back to the province comes back to the skills development, comes back to the creation of uh, the stories that are based in the province and also promote the culture that we actually have in the province. Over and above that, actually, we promote uh, and want to fund movies that are driven by, you know, women. And uh, that is in terms of producing and directing, but also in terms of the protagonists that are actually being portrayed there, if they're women or they're youth. And that's actually what we're really looking for. Movies are the product of creativity, but what about the business of bringing the movie to the audience? Operating an independent entertainment enterprise is not an easy task and it demands a lot of lateral thinking. And who better to put that into focus than the CEO of the Avalon Group, A.B. Musa. 
Avi, welcome back to Mela. So nice to see you. Always great to be on the show. Thank you for having me. Being from South Africa, what changes have you seen in the local movie industry? Certainly continuously evolving. I think particularly post-democracy. The initial phase was a lot of uh, what I call therapeutic films, which was about the legacy histories. And that then continued to evolve into more commercial and entertaining films. Mela is focusing on the success of the local movie industry with an emphasis on South African Indian movies. What's your take on this? Film, as we all know, is a reflection of society. It's a reflection of a community. It's a reflection of uh, values. In Johannesburg, there was a film material based around Indian suburb called Fordsburg or Fitas. So I think those were reflections of those communities, those societies, that particularly played a big role in shaping the, the landscape of South Africa. African cinema as we continue to build on this foundation. Obviously phase one is to showcase to South Africans and appreciate the talent we have in this country and the skill set we have in this country, but that also becomes the foundation to showcasing what we have to offer to the world. And obviously South Africa being a beautiful location to attract a fusion of foreign and local collaborative products. This is a really exciting time in the local movie industry. And there are some great stories that explore the lives and experiences of South Africans of Indian origin. Three Days To Go, which opened in January, was massively successful. And Material, which was also a huge success, has a sequel in the pipeline. And the Kandasamis are back. There's definitely a lot to look forward to. Now we return to Karishma in studio.